Okay, well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. We've got a great, uh, great attendance this morning. Uh, we've got a terrific webinar for you coming up in just a minute. Um, my name is Kevin Burgoyne, President and CEO of the Florida Venture Forum. And on behalf of our, our board, our members, uh, and our staff, um, thank you very much for being with us. We're uh, trying to be very active at the Florida Venture Forum during this kind of unprecedented period uh, in putting out as much information as possible to our constituents, mainly uh, growing Florida companies and companies based elsewhere that have operations in Florida. Um, we've been doing these informational webinars uh, weekly for several weeks. We're going to continue with that. Um, we um, next week we'll start a, a series that we're the working title is Investor Deep Dives, where we will uh, feature one of our venture fund members and uh, one of the partners from from each of the, each of those funds. Talk a little bit about themselves, um, their investing philosophy, their fund, what they focus on and then uh, answer questions from the audience. So uh, look for information on that. We'll be sending that out within the next day or so. And uh, the first one of those will be next Thursday at 10 a.m. But uh, look for an invitation coming your way soon. Um, wanted to quickly recognize um, my colleague, Pat Schneider, who uh, runs the forum with me. Pat, um, why don't you say hello and also share some information about our upcoming uh, conference the uh, aerospace conference and other uh, housekeeping issues of course thank you kevin um i just wanted to let you know that the forum is also hosting a totally virtual aerospace event and you'll be getting information about that currently we are taking presenter application there are um actual award prizes um that Space Florida is contributing to. So all that information is on our website at flventure.org. So we hope you look at that. Uh, we certainly hope that you attend. And if you are an entrepreneur, that you apply to present. The other thing I just wanted to remind everybody, if you have any questions regarding the presentation today, there is a question box there that you'll see on your screen. Please feel free to type that in, and at the conclusion of the presentation, we'll try to get to all of your questions. Kevin? Great. Thanks, Pat. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, Stephanie Lichtenstein has been working with, uh, with us at the forum for a few years. Um, I've known Stephanie for seven or eight years, and she is uh, absolutely uh, the, the authority on social media. Um, I've personally learned so much from her and the work that uh, she and her colleagues at Micromedia do has been a, a great benefit to us. And um, social media is has quickly become an indispensable part of any company's um, marketing arsenal. And uh, so I'm looking very, very forward to uh, to her presentation today. So without further ado, uh, I'd like to turn it over to Stephanie. Stephanie? Thank you so much, Kevin, and thank you, Pat, for having me host this webinar. I'm very excited to share some of the new things that we've been seeing across social media. And micromedia marketing this weekend turned 11 years old. Um, so we've been in social media for a long time, and we've seen a lot of different things happen, and social media is constantly changing and evolving. But there's never been a time like this where the messaging and the strategies have completely shifted overnight. So whether you have a social media presence or not, using social media as a tool to communicate at this point in time with your customers, with your employees, is extremely important. And it's a free tool that you can utilize. So we're going to share uh, different ways to change your messaging and strategy right now. Sorry about that. Okay, so the first person that we're gonna see here that stood out to me on social media is an Instagram account by the name of at dude with sign. 
And he started on social media earlier this year in the streets of New York, holding up cardboard signs every single day with new messaging. And a lot of it had humor behind it. And he actually grew his following right now up to 7 million followers. So he does share things such as don't post your Zoom screenshots on social media and don't set up an Instagram for your dog. Um, but that actually grew into something bigger because he's partnered with brands such as Jimmy Fallon, Old Spice, and um, most recently the World Health Organization. And he's sharing self, um, safety tips and health tips with the youth. And um, he's really used his brand to help and educate people as to what's going on right now. But it started as something a lot more lighthearted and he's been able to leverage his brand. And um, he even helped with the Australian wildfires and has a lot of great relevant content going on while still keeping it light and humorous. So I did, I am guilty of posting the, the first um, team Zoom meeting that we had. And um, we had a lot of fun just checking in and seeing how working from home was going. And I did share that on my social media. Um, but what we really need to talk about are the real things you should be communicating on social media. And uh, we also personally started shifting our messaging almost immediately, sharing resources on how to work from home, sharing social media resources, and that's why we're doing this webinar today. So let's get into seven tips and ways that you can communicate through social media. So the, the first tip, which is you know pretty obvious, is you want to communicate your plans with your consumers, with your team, and anyone that's being affected that relates back to your company. So if you're a school, you know, you wanna send messaging to students and parents. And if you're an organization like the government or even a city, it's really important to be giving more up-to-date news on what's going on internally. And one of the first companies that I saw really step up in a powerful way was Marriott International. So the CEO, Mr. Sorensen, um, he posted a video. And as you can see, um, you know, he, he's bald here. And he was going through medical treatments. And he said that he wasn't going to let that hold him back from communicating with everyone and letting them know what their plans were and how important it was for everyone to come together right now and be strong and be united. And um, this video, at this point, has gotten over a million views. And I noticed it because um, I have a friend that is the general manager of one of the Marriott International um, companies in Florida. And he was touched by the message and shared it. And even though that message was so difficult to share, people really respected and connected with what he had to say. And again, he was one of the first ones that I saw. This was um, you know, in, in mid-March, posting this message and, and really communicating what was going on. And, and, you know, this affects hundreds of thousands of employees. And everyone truly respected his message. And the way that he handled that was just very powerful. The second thing that you should definitely be doing is engaging your team on social media and also seeing how you can help and give back with them. Um, so here we have the Try Guys, which they're generally producing YouTube video content and doing a lot of things that are fun and they're out and about. Well, at this point, they need to be home, but they're trying to see, you know, how can they help? How can they give back? So giving that message of helping and of hope, um, they also saw how they can get involved with the World Health Organization. And YouTube, um, since they work so closely with them, was matching donations and they were also making donations and encouraging their audience to stay home. HealthJoy is a company that does telemedicine among, among a lot of other things for, for employees and health benefits. And my husband's the CMO of this company and he put a blog together on, you know, how to improve employee morale. So they were thinking, you know, what do people need right now and how can we help them and how can we educate them on different resources and different ways to keep their employees healthy. 
Um, so this is something that they shared on social media that could not only affect their internal employees, but also employees of their customers. So if you haven't already, you should personally join social media and join the community online. Even the Easter Bunny did that. And I thought this was very creative. This is from a mall in Chicago that has really nice um, stores like Bloomingdale's. And every year they have Santa Claus um, go in. And I think this last year they had like a hipster looking Santa with a beard and a suit. Um, and then they had the Easter Bunny, which they were planning on doing this at the mall so they were thinking you know what can we do at a time right now to cheer people up to still connect them with the easter bunny for their kids sorry about that um and then what can we do to leverage that so they introduced the easter bunny across their instagram page they emailed they put this on their website they ran some social media ads around this and what they did in this time was they drew attention to themselves because I even, I shared this with, you know, friends for their kids, but also their main focus with doing this was to grow their Instagram following. So it's like, how can we stay connected to our audience right now? And let's bring them over to Instagram and then let's have the Easter Bunny go live on Sunday at two o'clock Eastern time and have everyone watching us and sharing what's going on. So this was a really fun and simple way to get involved and to do something that they were already planning on doing it and taking it online. And then on a personal note, if you're not active on social media yourself, it is a good time not only for your company, but also for yourself to be more involved in the online community. So this one is was one of my favorites. Um, so Shed Aquarium in Chicago, and I've seen Miami Zoo and the aquarium in Tampa, just getting in on the fun and spreading joy and spreading still messages of their company on social media. So things that you would normally do if you were a brick and mortar and you're relying on tourists or people coming in to your, your store or your location is taking that online. And um, they actually on a daily basis were taking the penguins around on tours to visit different um, spots of the aquarium and the beluga whales loved seeing the penguins and um, it was great to see them interact but this also picked up a lot of traction locally and got picked up um, by by different social media accounts and different channels and people still found ways to donate to the aquarium online and still support their efforts um, for the animals and still stay, stay, still stay relevant in front of their audience. So this was one of my favorite things that I saw and they often went live. Um, some zoos even had live cams going on where you can just check in on the animals and see what's going on. And it's just a great way to stay relevant. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of Gary Vee. He's really big in social media. I, I got to work with him when I started the company in New York. And he's constantly putting content out and he's constantly helping entrepreneurs and businesses on what can they do to grow and what can they do to use social media to, to stay relevant. At this point, there's so many people coming to him from all different walks of life that don't know what to do. So, you know, here we have a student, an attorney, a baker, and a musician. And I've seen each of these different backgrounds utilize social media right now. So his general consensus is you need to be making content. So think about your story, think about how you can tell it on social media, and think about how it can translate to social media. So as a musician, um, there's a band in Chicago that we love to see live at events. Well, all those events are canceled, but they set up at a venue and had a live concert on social media and they were taking donations. So I paid what I would have paid like a ticket to go see them. Um, and I watched them from home and it was again, an uplifting moment and they still were able to monetize from that and still share what they would be doing live online. Um, I've seen attorneys hosting webinars and giving tips on you know how to deal with the law and your business during the coronavirus. Um, even a baker, I've seen a lot of businesses that are normally 
uh, doing something like baking and selling in person and they actually are sharing online here's how to bake a cake and here are the instructions and again you know that could either be tied somehow back to donations or it could be events that you actually have tickets for online but it's very important to think about how do I translate what I would normally be doing and how can I help people or, or spread joy to people and share that through social media so on LinkedIn, if you're a B2B business, when you post something on social media, if you have a sales team or a team that can push that message out further, LinkedIn has a section on the middle right which says notify employees of this post. So if you're sharing that relevant information, spreading that to a larger audience on LinkedIn is a great tool. And I think your sales team right now is gonna be looking to you for guidance. Um, so putting out blogs and putting out relevant content that they could also share on their personal accounts is another powerful tool that you can use. So the Florida Venture Forum actually mentioned this earlier, and I think it's amazing that they were going to host this event later in the year, and they decided, along with Space Florida, that they were going to put this event out virtually and um, companies are competing for $100,000 and they wanted to make sure that those prizes were still available to these businesses. So they put it out sooner and they're hosting it completely virtually. So I'm super excited about this and I love seeing that they're doing it completely online. And that way they're still helping companies. And um, you know, even if you were gonna have an event, there's no reason why you can't host it virtually. Even if you're a smaller company or an individual, um, you can still utilize going live as a resource. So Facebook and Instagram have really easy live components. And what's really cool about going live is that you can also interact with your audience. So here we have an example of a yoga instructor and she has people that would normally take her class be able to share with their friends who may have not known about the class and also ask questions and interact with her. And again, you know, she can tie this back to some sort of a donation tool and make money from the comfort of her home or her studio. So everyone has an expertise. Here we have Bob Ross who has over 400 episodes that you can take for free. Um, you can do things live and you can host webinars, but you can also create video content that can make you money more ongoing. So it's not something that's just a one-off uh, when people are following you at that moment. Um, there's other tools that you can use uh, through YouTube and through edu education platforms that have been popping up like Udem Udemy is a place where people are teaching courses online. So how can you take your expertise and share that with everyone? So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Marcus Limonis. Um, he actually went to Columbus in Miami and um, he's a very large entrepreneur that invests in businesses and he's been on TV and he has shows like The Profit. And um, he always says that he cares about people, process, and uh, I believe product. Um, so, but the biggest thing that he cares about are people and helping small businesses. So in a time like now, he's not only focusing on his TV show, but he's also sharing and educating with small businesses. What can you do in this time? Um, you know, how can you learn about SBA lending? And he was on a TV show on CNBC just talking about this topic, but he didn't just leave it there. He also went on social media, and in this case, he went on Twitter, which is very conversational, um, and he had a specific hashtag, the path forward, that people could tweet and ask him questions on. So he is still continuing in his regular messaging, but he's also seeing how can he help people further that really need the help right now and have questions about SBA lending. Tip number six is how do you shift your content? So here's a company called Tom's, which makes shoes and um, on the left hand side they had an ad running that was just like a regular ad campaign focused around maybe their latest shoe line um, what was popular for spring and they're heavily focused on online sales and they're also in retail stores 
So on the right hand side, you can see that they quickly shifted their messaging. Um, you know, you might not want a new pair of heels or fancy shoes if you're staying home. So the first thing they did was think about what other products could they be promoting right now. So they switched their messaging to focus on working from home and to focus on slippers. Um, and then they also are offering, and it says at the bottom, your, your purchase drives change. So they're also offering a part of their proceeds to help organizations that are giving back um, to healthcare workers and other organizations that are trying to support people affected by COVID. So not only did they change what product they were promoting, but they also, again, um, tied it back to how they can help other organizations. And okay, so the Girl Scouts also rolled out completely online. So this is something that has definitely always been, um, you know, face to face. When you walk outside of a grocery store, you see the Girl Scouts there selling cookies and they completely shifted their model to ordering online, which is great. And again, they commuted that, communicated that through social media. Um, but one of the other things that they did was offer to donate to first responders. So I actually have someone in my building whose daughter was selling cookies. And um, so I've been lucky that I haven't even ordered online. I've ordered from her. But every time I would order, it was like two for me, one for first responders. And um, I've been enjoying my Girl Scout cookies, but I also enjoy that I can give back to others. So we do see a lot of the messaging shifting to completely online and also shifting to how can I somehow give back as well. Here we have a local bank and this ad was promoted on LinkedIn to me since I am in Chicago right now. And um, they had a very powerful message. And again, they're sharing a message of unity of how we're all in this together. And then when you click learn more, it goes back to their website and it shares additional resources for their clients on, you know, if you need to learn about, let's say the SBA loans, or you're just not sure about something related to that bank and you're banking with them, it's really educating people and sharing resources on how they can help you. Uh, but that's completely different from what they had in their messaging before. Back to Marriott again, I think they've done an amazing job. Um, you know, you're, you don't want to see people outside having a cocktail at the pool when you can't really go to a pool right now or you can't go to the beach. Um, so their message is of we will travel again, stay healthy, we'll be waiting for you. Um, and it does give the option to go and book for the future. But I think that that tweak in their messaging is very uplifting and powerful. Um, Northwestern University was also finding a way to help people. So they started generating uh, a thousand face shields a day with a 3D printer. Um, so there's very interesting technologies being used right now. And there's different ways that people are helping and giving back. And this is just another example of that. And they immediately started producing this and, and helping um, people in the pandemic right now locally. It's super important to help each other and promote each other when you can. So Marcus, again, stepped up. And um, the first time he was on TV and he went on Twitter and answered people's questions. This example, he took it a step further and wanted to give businesses on Instagram an opportunity to talk about their businesses. So what happened was, is he went live. And when you go live, you have the opportunity to add other people and join the conversation with you. So every minute he would pick a different business to promote. Um, and this definitely does tie back to his brand. And in this case, he actually picked a friend of mine's company. Um, so Sarah Cooley and I met in New York, um, I had started Micromedia. And then a couple years later, I noticed that she started a candle company, which I thought was really cool. And over the years, I've seen her grow that company. And she actually moved over to Grand Rapids, Michigan and opened up a studio and has a team helping her to develop these beautiful candles. And it's been really nice to see her over the years evolve and grow that business to where 
she sells online on simply simplycurated.com but she also sells in stores nationwide and um she was picked by marcus to join the live stream and she had met him um at a trade show earlier and she told me that you know she was pretty active in outreaching to him on instagram because he was interested in her candles and he took it a step further and said that if she sold a hundred candles that he would also buy a hundred candles from her so this is a way where everyone's benefiting from that and um it took him a minute of his time to get on instagram live it goes back to his messaging where he's helping businesses and he you know he can still profit off of that but so is a small business like sarah's simply curated and um i just think that use of his time just helps everyone all around. Crosby's Kitchen is a local restaurant and they decided, you know, how can we get involved? And they gave back to St. Anthony Hospital and they partnered with a local charity um, related to the Chicago Cubs. And they just wanted to feed healthcare care workers on the front lines. And this is a simple thing that they did. You know, they, they had the resources and then they went ahead and shared that messaging on social media. Not all heroes wear capes. And that's something that's inspiring and it's a good way to get involved. Last but not least, you need to remember just to have fun. So here we have John Krasinski, who I think some people were upset that those papers propping up his laptop weren't uh, Dunder Mifflin. So for the office fans there, uh, but he was sitting at home wondering what to do with his time. And he launched something called Some Good News. And he's done three episodes, but I haven't seen anything else blow up on, on social media like this. Um, people were sharing messages in the comments that they had tears of joy from the content that he was sharing on Some Good News, because I think that's what everyone needs right now. Um, so he actually partnered with different companies. And on the second video, there was a young lady named Abigail who's in the middle there and her mom had tweeted out that her daughter was very disappointed that she wasn't going to be able to go see Hamilton live. Um, so John Krasinski invited her on the show. He offered her tickets in New York. Um, but then Lynn manuel, manuel Miranda um, joined the Zoom call with the entire cast of of the original cast of Hamilton and they sang Alexandra Hamilton to her and it was absolutely incredible. It just made me so happy. And um, it was, again, I mean, I'm sure it definitely took some effort to get everybody together, but it was an amazing moment. It got shared so many times. It gave Hamilton a bit of press, um, but it just overall made everyone feel really good. And these are some of the things that we've been seeing that have made an impact. Um, sometimes it's just spreading that good news and seeing how you can get involved um, that'll make all the difference right now. So rethink your messaging, see how you can help others, see how you can educate them, and also just remember to have fun with it. Um, there are a lot of social media tools out there that are free that are being offered. I've mainly seen a lot on Facebook and Facebook also owns Instagram. So a lot of the resources can be utilized on both platforms. Um, they have courses if you don't know how to you know, post on social media of really walk through steps on different things that you would wanna learn about. And then on the right hand side for local businesses, they even offer gift cards. Um, so if you can't have someone purchase right now, they can purchase a gift card for the future um, they have messaging as well, which you can set up automated. So let's say, you know, you're home, you're with your kids, you're trying to keep your business running. Uh, you can have an automated message, let people know that our store is closed, but we're still taking orders online. And then um, if you don't have, let's say, someone that's doing graphic design, they even offered uh, these pre-made templates for Facebook and Instagram that says, yes, you know, we're still taking online orders or we're open. And they have a lot of different things that you can utilize that just make it easier for you to share that message. Um, there's also social media tools that you can be using for management. 
So if you're a larger company, you've probably heard of Sprout Social and it's a management tool which helps you with scheduling and getting messages out on social media. So you can pre-plan you know, a week or a month of content out and you can also monitor and reply and do reporting on that platform. Buffer is similar, it's, um, it's simple to use and, and the price point is, um, is better for a smaller company. Um, it also allows you to pre-schedule content out. And then Facebook Blueprint is another resource that Facebook offers, which again, will walk you through like, for example, how to set up an advertising campaign and different resources that you may wanna learn within uh, Facebook and for Facebook business. Um, Instagram has also launched Instagram, sorry, not Instagram. Uh, Instagram does have Instagram Live, but LinkedIn has also launched a live feature. So if you're targeting other businesses and you normally would be at an event speaking live and, and you know, you're not able to do that right now, a tool like LinkedIn Live would be really beneficial. Uh, but you can also do that on Facebook and Instagram. It just depends on who you're really trying to target. So if you're trying to target other businesses, I would say focusing on LinkedIn is going to be more important for you. And I'm happy to see that they added that feature on LinkedIn as well. So now we're going to open it up to some questions. Uh, 